all the way from Providence, Rhode Island, live in the Minute with Mary studio. Welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm not going to lie, I am loving these little tweaks of the song. Over the sea to sky. Like, yes, yes, this is a... (laughs) A sticky point for us all. But I, Mary I'm, Larson, am still here to not tell you. It. Still not feeling it. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that I am loving it a little bit more each time I hear it. Uh, I wish I could say the same. That's okay. I will be the optimist for you. Sure. Yeah, why not? I'm in. I'm in. Let's go. So hi, everybody. I'm Mary. My name is Blake. And this is our first listen to feedback episode in quite a long time. And I'm, I, as you all know, the, the listener feedback episode, if you've been listening to Mary and Blake Media for a while now, you know that the listener feedback episode might be my favorite thing that we do, except for like the After Doc show. The After Doc show is a big deal. It is special for you. Uh, yes. But the listener feedback, it's because you know why? Why? It, it's agenda free. Totally agenda free. It's all about you. It's all about the things that you sent in to us. It's all about the stuff that the people that are watching us now are saying. We're just here having a good time, man. We're just facilitating conversation. That we are. And I'm I'm here for it. Me I'm too. It. Me too. Plus, we get to watch the preview at the end of the episode. Oh, <laughs> that is always so incredibly exciting. So um, before, of course, we get into the rest of the episode, we want to make sure that you're following Blake and I on all the socials. We're on Instagram and Facebook the most. We're also on YouTube. So you can just search Mary and Blake. Really easy to find. Um and then you can actually keep up to date on all of our podcasts and blogs and events and all the fun things we do at Mary and Blake Media just by going to maryandblake.com or by following us on those socials. Yes. Because we are social on the socials. So social. Except for TikTok. It's ruining America. No, we're gonna we're working on our TikToks. We actually no, we're uploading TikToks. You are uploading TikToks. You're I creating refuse. them. I refuse no he's creating I'm creating them. it for YouTube. Okay. I'm not creating it for TikTok. <laughs> ruining America. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. <laughs> All right, Marvin. Are you ready to... Oh, are you ready to release the hounds for I the first time? I haven't said that in so long. Yes. Yes, I am ready Actually, before... to release the hounds. All right. Hold on. Before we do that, actually, I just thought about this. I, I was going through our, our, our soundboard here. Okay. And I found a Back to the Future sound. Yes. Uh, And I don't remember why I played... Are you in or are you out? That one? No. That was, that's, are you in or are you, that was, this is us too. Yeah, I know. No, no, you put, put your headphones on. Okay. Put your headphones on. Okay. All right. This is, uh, this is the back to the future sound that is in my Outlander bin, but But I don't, don't I can't remember why we put it in here. Okay. Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Roads. It's there, but I don't. I don't remember why it's there. It was. It was for a reason. So maybe it, it, it was like your original, like outlandish theories no, or time. No. Friends who've been listening to Outlander Cast for a long time, if you can help us find <laughs> where this sound clip originated in our podcast and what the original use was, that would be amazing because I'm excited about this. Yeah. So nerds that are watching now. Let us know if if it was a segment. Or so. I can't remember what the hell we put it on there for, but whatever. All right, Marvin, are you ready to release the hounds? That I am. Yes, I am. All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right. Right. Gracious, that music makes me so happy. Isn't it so good? <gasps> oh, I love it. Just, I'm dancing. I hope that those of you watching live are like dancing in your in your car, in your bed, you know, wherever you are. If you don't feel this beat, you ain't alive. Yes. That's how that's how it's it. That's how we do it. <laughs> okay. Albert King said it best. If you don't feel this, you ain't alive. All right. Well, we're here <laughs> for it. All right. So 
Yes. Okay. So we're going to start with uh, join the nerdclan.com comments. Okay. And we are going to, I think we're going to need to disperse some voicemails along the way too. Okay. Uh, just because we got a lot of stuff. We everyone do. had a, everyone had a lot everyone of things to say. Everyone has all the things to say, which right. is so great cuz Outlander's back, baby. Yes. All right. So, uh all right, here we go. Uh Veronica Defoe says, "Hey Blake, Roger just wants to be there when his baby girl is going through a major heart surgery, not him getting a hot shower. You have a baby girl. Bet if you leave your entertainer mind rest for a bit and have your da- have your dad of a baby girl mind on, mm-hmm. you'll find You'll feel what Ooh. Roger is feeling. I'm sure. I, I, I'm not saying that he doesn't want to get his, his, his baby man to get healed. I, I'm not saying that. But I'm also not going to say that he's going to turn down a hot shower. I think he's excited about the hot, hot shower. As a matter of fact, I know he's excited about the hot shower because we had one of them cold opens featuring him using a hot shower, dreaming about it. That man wants a hot shower. Well, I want to know, does he have a Boston cream pie? <laughs> that is what I need to know. <laughs> All right, the next one comes from Maureen. She says, I have to use decimals on this episode and give it 4.9. We don't judge the decimal kilts. usage. We love decimal usage. You need the decimals. Yeah. You need it. If you don't have it, again, you ain't alive. Uh, what a fantastic episode of Outlander, especially everything that came after the opening credits, because all this stuff with Alan Christie was meh. I understand it was necessary for the story to finally close out the chapter on the Christie's, but ew, especially the flashback images with Alan and Malva. Yes. Did we need to see another character being raped outlander? Did we? No. That specific flashback was unnecessary. Plus, most of those glimpses into the past just look bad with that cheap gray tint. Hold on. Time out. uh, Maureen, hold on. Mary. Yes. Your thoughts on the desaturated color usage they uh, like to do that that's their thing that's their thing instead of saying previously or like flashback yeah that's what outlander does that's outlander talk (laughs) this is a flashback uh but now we can finally move on from that dreadful family and get to the good stuff my good is the touching scene between lord john and jamie all of it really but most specifically the end when the two friends realize they can't be in each other's lives anymore. So sad. The it look, is so sad. The look on Lord John's face. David Barry continues to amaze me. Mm-hmm. And finally, my great is the firefly scene between Jamie and Bree. When she told him, you are magical to me, my heart melted. Yes. Special mention to Katrina Bell for being amazing as ever in this episode. And Agreed. to that shot of the wee Jemmy's plane revealing an actual mm-hmm. plane. And... She too has a outlandish theory. So let's Ooh, play let's the get music. The sounds. Do tell. All right, her outlandish theory is that William will find out Jamie is his father when he is across the barrel of his son's gun. <sighs> I could see Lord John or someone else being like, William, don't. He's your father. And then the Luke Skywalker, no. (laughs) It can't be. (laughs) That's impossible. Interesting, my friend. Interesting. (laughs) Jennifer Barrett uh, gave this episode a four. She said, wow, I was pretty impressed with this episode. It could just be the afterglow talking, but I'm inclined to give it a full five kilts. Then why is there a word four? Blake, maybe you added that by accident to the thing. What did I do? She wants to give it a five underneath Jennifer instead of four, but she's saying she wants to give it a five. Oh, uh, uh, her good. oh yeah, that's it. That was the, Oh, sorry. that was a little full pop. Yeah. I got you. Um, her good was there's a lot of plot packed into the episode, yet the character interactions don't feel rushed or shortchanged at all. In fact, quite the opposite. Due in part to the exquisite acting across the entire cast, I bawled for the entire last half hour, and I'm not normally much of a crier. And Jennifer, that is something you and I both share. I cried so much in this episode that it is. And for various non-criers, we're like, hold on a second. Our, our heartstrings are being pulled right here. Her Jennifer's bad was, well, it's not even a bad per se, but I wanted to know for sure if Jamie actually took the last of the Browns to the Super Bowl, if you know what I mean. Hint, <laughs> it's a euphemism for a bodily function we use, uh, used here as a metaphor for offing Richard Brown. Here's hoping that the odious dink is well <laughs> and truly flushed. You know what? Good job. Well done. Bam. Well done, Jeff. You just made really right. Great dink <laughs> usage right there. Agreed. Um, and then her great is I mentioned the stellar acting before, but it certainly bears repeating that this episode was impeccably acted. Chef's kiss says Jennifer. And apropos of nothing, you gotta love the Sir Gifts a Lot swooping in for the win with the Sapphire. Oh, God, how do we 
not mention that. That's true. The sapphire from season three, His great callback. Gift giving streak continues. Gosh, you know, it's like it's like we just know. We just know he's so good that now we're not even mentioning that he drops the best gift Ever. of his life. <laughs> just you know, on a whim. That he's didn't held up for twenty it. years. Didn't plan it. Didn't like have an idea. Just you know what? Of course, I have gifts on me. Ad lib. I'm gonna first gift it to Jamie, and then he's gonna gift it to Bree. This is like a double gift. Totally <laughs> worth it. Totally worth it. Jamie regifted though- a gift. He did. He's a. A rabid nope. regift. And then uh, Jennifer says, and even though it was a heart wrenching scene with Claire and Jamie in bed talking about the family they'd lost, I couldn't help feeling amused that once again they seem to have completely forgotten about Ian. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> Chopped liver? Come on, people. You still got young Ian. Great season so far. Can't wait for the rest. Jennifer, I love Bye, that. Bye, Ian. Bye, Ian. Exactly. We lost our whole family. We lost this person, that person. There's Ian just whittling in the, in the corner. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> Still making arrows. Still Ian's, here. Ian's playing 0.0 role in this entire season so far. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Bart I mean, yeah, he killed Alan, but whatevs. Yeah. Like, sure. Yeah. That's what he's going to do. Like, who wouldn't do that? All right, here we go. You ready for yes. uh, for some voicemails? Oh, okay. Yes. All right, please. here we go. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Mandy here from Melbourne, Australia. Hey, Andy. One of your OG fans. I'm so happy you're back. I've decided I'm going to rate you guys instead of the show. So I'm giving you a five stars for this season seven. And congratulations on everything that you do within this podcast. But I was looking forward to hearing from you so much and you did not disappoint. My good was hearing you again, all the sound bites, all the fun things that we've come to love. My bad is that it's never long enough, but that's not really a bad, is it? And my great is at the end with the Lord John and the Brie and the contouring, and I could not stop laughing. And Mary, you are so funny. You make me laugh every time. Oh. And I just want to encourage you both. You are doing such a great job. Congratulations on everything, and I cannot wait to share with you every week. Keep up oh. the magnificent work. Bye. Bye. Thank nice job. you. Mandy, way to start Gosh, the season off man, for us. That's great. I needed great. that pep talk. I had a rough day momming today. Oh, yeah, so it was a bad day for you. you. That Holy was, smokes. What thank a way you. to start that off. All right, let's get to the next yeah. one. Let's get to his one. Hi, Miriam. This is Laurel from hey, Laurel. Los Angeles. Hi, Laurel. I loved the scene between Lord John Gray and Jamie. The acting... Uh, the looks in their eyes, yes. the music, it was so beautiful. And um, and then we had that nod in another scene between Lord John Gray and Jamie that was yep. also so moving, excellent, beautiful. And I don't know, just the depth of those characters and the relationship is something I really appreciate. And uh, I love how well these actors are able to translate that onto the screen. Mm-hmm. It's truly beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that was my favorite part of the episode. Hey. Um, just wanted to share that. Thank you. Bye. Thanks Thank you, for Laurel. sharing, Laurel. I will say that I love the relationship between Jamie and Lord John. The bromance. The bromance is, it, it's strong with the force. And uh, I, I Second appreciate- Star Wars. Yeah, I know. Shout out. <laughs> That's the second Referring one. to both Lord John and Jamie as well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a comment here from Jane Dickinson on Facebook. Mm. She said, Lord John wore the gem inside of his jacket over his heart. Oh, yeah, he did. For 20 years. Oh, yeah, he did. Over his heart. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's get one more here. Uh, one more voicemail. We got plenty of more, but we're going to do one more. And All then right. we'll move on to the let's next Let's bring step. it. All right, here we go. Hi, this is Bunny from Cincinnati. Hi, hey, Bunny. Bunny. Wow, you are tearing my guts out, Outlander. This was such an emotionally satisfying episode. Definitely an episode about goodbyes Mm -hmm. and how we deal with them. Mm -hmm. It's rare when you actually get to say the words to someone that have always been in your heart, but the timing was never right to say them. Being able to say your words to family who you know you will never see again was both heart-wrenching and satisfying. Mm -hmm. The Jamie and Brianna moments were exactly what we have longed for. The Firefly scene was just magnificent, both visually and emotionally. Jamie being unselfish enough to tell Claire that she should go back with them if she wanted, but also knowing that he would die without her. Mm. Granda showing little Mandy the horse he would someday like to show her to ride, 
but now will never be. Jamie seeing Brianna and William together and knowing it will be the only glimpse he will ever see of them together. John and Jamie realizing that their friendship is doomed and they must sever the bond that was between them. Jamie finally telling Roger the words he so desperately needed to hear. Yes, he is a man of worth. Claire pouring her heart out to Jamie is what real grief looks like. Mm -hmm. I think season seven is going to be gritty, raw, violent, and emotional, and I can't wait. All right, Bonnie. Yes. Thank you so much. Agreed. Uh, so excited. Uh, we also had a comment here from Linda on Facebook. She says, I loved when Jamie said, you are a Fraser and then a Mackenzie, the same as me. Your heart is strong. Oh. Mm, I like that, too. That uh, really as good. Lisa would say, it's about damn time. <laughs> All right. This one comes from Lori on, at jointhenerdclan.com. She says, hey, Mary and Blake, long time listener since season 1A, and it is the first wow. time that she is writing in. Oh my gosh, yay, hi. Thank you so much, Lori. I give this episode 4.75 kilts and really enjoyed the episode. My good is when Alan Christie says he can't go on living and bam, arrow, right in the back. And Ian says, he is right, auntie. He can't go mm -hmm. living. My bad may seem like a small thing, but those huge fake fireflies looked really bad. Maybe they were trying to recreate Disneyland with a bunch of Tinkerbells flying around, but that is That's not what fireflies look like. And they should have also spent more money on the fake stones at Ocracoke. My great was also all of the goodbyes to the Mackenzies at the stones. Mm -hmm. They didn't seem rushed, and enough time was spent to really get the emotions that they were all feeling. All in all, a great episode, though, and looking forward to more. You know, it's you just said the Mackenzies, and I was just talking to a person today at our pool club of all places, and she was somehow it came up. Oh, that they were going to Maine, and they were like, "Oh, and we have some family from Maine who came from Nova Scotia." And I was like, "Oh, you guys Scottish?" She was like, "Yeah." How 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 did you know that? And I was like. Wait, for real? <laughs> Are you by any chance like the McDonald's Scottish people who were in Nova Scotia? She was like, yes. Wait, what? <laughs> and then <laughs> she just kept going. And sh and I was able to say like, oh, and how about the Mackenzie? She was like, yes. So I think I just found a random person who I'm related to. That is the most Rhode Island thing ever. But Rhode Island, except it's through our Scottish I know, heritage. I know. It's, it's, it's like a, it's a perfect storm of events. I know. <laughs> All right. Sorry for that quick little change, but. All right. Uh, here's a comment from Michael on Facebook. He says, each of the scenes on their own were excellent. However, I felt like this episode was, was too compressed to include all of these necessary plot points, and it did not seem to flow together as well as it should. Four and a half kilts. Marvin, your thoughts on that take? I mean, I feel like. Ugh, I, feel, I feel like the Christie's part needed to just be checked out over in yeah, episode one, and then it would have felt a little bit more area to breathe. Mm -hmm. But I really loved this episode. Yep, I'm in. All right. Uh, you want to read Janelle next, or should I? Shall I, I? I totally will. Janelle okay. wrote in saying, after watching your recap show, I thought it was a shame you didn't want to talk about Roger or the Christie's. Ooh, no wonder you want me to read this one. This one rips you <laughs> apart. Let me get a little more situated here. Now, Blake, yes. I know you don't like Roger because you think Rick Rankin hit on Mary, but let's No, no, I don't think that he did. He did. Oh my God. No, he did. This is so over this. Nope. So over nope. this. Not over I just over think it. he saw that I was a friendly person. He okay? think, That's all I it was. I think he saw... Uh, a couple, a couple of friendly friends. Oh God. Okay, Blake. <laughs> no, no. The first time he talked to me, I was uh, sitting down eating pasta when everyone else was getting autographs. Uh, okay, maybe and then he, I told maybe, him, he, maybe he's into pasta. I don't, I don't yuck maybe, anybody's yum. Maybe he was like, "This girl eats." And I was like, "Ciao, <laughs> manja." <laughs> Didn't actually manja. say that to him. <laughs> um, okay, so she said, Mary's a beautiful uh, woman. Thank you way too much, Janelle. That was very kind of you. Um, many men would want her just like many men want Claire. You you can't be Jamie and go around with a pistol and tell men to keep their hands off your wife or to not look in her direction. It's time to let bygones be bygones. Nope, never. The show is the show and real life is real life. Roger is not Rick Rankin. I think what you're missing is Roger uh, is his sense of compassion and his want to help others. That's part of the reason he was going to become a minister. He helped Amy with her house because it reminded him of his mother being a single mom with a son during World War II after his dad's plane was shot down. Yeah. He also shows compassion to the Christies, thinking they need help getting back on their Roger feet. little showing compassion. And, um, <laughs> you're so gross, Blake. 
And people who are compassionate. By little, I mean very little, Roger. <laughs> this is so hard to read because you were like not a compassionate person, Blake. Uh, uh, I'm trying to read this beautiful feedback. Slytherin. You're a wizard, Harry. <sighs> All right. Sorry, go back to very little, Raj. <laughs> and people who are compassionate and want to help are often uh, misunderstood and are often taken advantage of. Now, if Roger hadn't said yes to the Christies, we would have had a much different season six. Mm-hmm. But that probably wouldn't have stopped the Browns from trying to torment the Frasers. If Roger had listened to his instinct about Donner and helped him get to the stones, would Donner have shown up at Fraser's Ridge and blown up their house? Maybe Donner would have pulled a fast one on of Roger once Roger helped him. Also, to skip over the Christie's means missing another great discussion. The flashback footage shows Alan abusing her, and he tells Claire that Malva was trying to come up with a solution once she found out she was pregnant. Was this mess with Malva all Alan's fault? Was Malva guiltless? Did she feel as though she had no options, which is why she couldn't come to them in the first place? Or was she using the situation to work an angle to get out of there? Even if she ended up marrying Henderson or Ian, would Alan have ended up murdering both Malva and her husband? I do agree that Tony Graffia is a great writer and can make you feel all the feels. However, she's had her fair share of ruining the storyline for her own writing instead of adapting. She's written herself in a corner and has had to retrofit the important plot points that Mm. she didn't think was important. Mm -hmm. The reason this episode is so good and that Jamie feels more authentic is is that they are finally writing him the way he was in the book or within the frame bar- framework of the character and they are finally using Diana's dialogue. Jamie's farewell to Jemmy and saying, if you see a large mouse named Michael, that's all Diana. Not that adapting c- should be copy and paste because some things work better in the book than on screen and changes have had to be made. Like Brown didn't die in the book like we saw in 701. Mm-hmm. However, they don't have time to show everything Diana wrote and having Jamie show up in the Brown's room and take care of business is very much in line with his character and I loved it, Good. she writes. Yep. All of this to say that credit should be given to where it is due. Even the actors have said in interviews that the show flows so much better when they use book dialogue. So while Tony is a good writer and a more experienced writer, a lot of the praise that you were giving her was Diana's work, not Tony's. I don't know how she allowed it because I think adapting is a struggle for Tony and she prefers writing her own material, but I'm glad she left in what she did. Hmm, Interesting. Interesting. I will say that it takes a professional writer to adapt a book. And it requires a lot of finesse and an extraordinarily um, a huge amount of talent to uh, create uh, television or film through the lens of a book. And that is not just me being Blake and 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 loving Tony Graffia. Uh, that is proven by many a people, most specifically the author of the Harry Potter series, because. She wrote the first three films of the Fantastic Beasts movies, and they were awful. And I mean, God awful. So all I'm going to say is, I understand where you're coming from about Tony and whatever, but it takes an an incredibly talented writer to do what she does. And uh, knowing what to take, what to put in, how to put it in characterize these specific characters so that we have moments like Mandy and the horse and all of that stuff. It's really important. You, you have to do other things. Well, that- and I don't think that you're not giving credit to Diana. No. I think that that's the point that I want to bring up is that like Diana gets uh, any and all credit. I mean, sure. she's the creator of all of this and obviously the source yep. of these lines. But I think what you're also saying is that we do want to shine a light on these other people who are not always Uh, flooded with the praise. You know, everyone's very, very quick to praise Diana and the lead cast. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the people who, you got the sexy jobs, you know, your name's on the cover, your your photo's on the cover. And it's like, you don't always see Tony. Mm Mm-hmm. But yes, we as avid show watchers, we know. But that, I think that's what you're just trying to get at. Yes. Uh, Rivdia here, uh, Rivdia Lopez on Facebook says, The Back to the Future sound, Mary and Blake, was from last season's Mary's time travel segment, where she would ask Blake a question or an opinion. So yes. like, hey, Blake, what would you do? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. So we had to, I had, to, I had to time travel back. That's the reason. Thank you thank so much. You, thank you. Thank you. I am so glad that uh, <laughs> somebody remembered because, you know, the guy that runs the show has no clue what you know. we did it for. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> well, on that note, it's time to tell you a little bit about our sponsor. All right. All right. 
Our sponsor is WeBox, which is a monthly subscription box that's designed to share Scotland with Scots and Scots at heart all over the world. Every single WeBox is carefully curated around a monthly theme with five bonny gifts and treats, which are often exclusive or can't be bought outside Scotland. It's a great value. There's a free magazine written with Scotland's top journalists, free exclusive virtual tour with internet sensation Andy the Highlander, plus a soundtrack to listen to as you unbox and use your gifts. So the contents of each wee box are worth so much more than what you pay for it. It supports small Scottish businesses, craftsmanship, its environment, and charities too. I'm sitting here right now. Oh yeah, and um, we, got, we have a we <laughs> literally have our wee box in our studio. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. I mean, we just I got a hip flask. Yeah, we've got Mrs. Fitz inspired 18th century bannocks. Oh, we've got um, a necklace that has a little piece of Scottish heather, and yeah. I cannot wait to wear this. Oh, um, yeah. And what I love about this is some of the things are like straight up right in your face, like yes, this is Scotland. And then there's other things that are a little bit more demure yeah. but you know you know you're carrying not only something that reminds you of Scotland that makes you think of Scotland but honestly came from Scotland yeah they, we, they even gave us uh, a, a, a little box with an actual standing stone and grass and stuff that's from Scotland like, yeah. that's like actual Scottish stone it's which now is like, up hanging up with all of our nerd stuff so if you oh, are interested we even got spiced ginger cookie creams from the Loch Ness Bakery I can't even hold on we're going to switch cameras because okay. it's that good <laughs> It's that good. Hold on. Right here. Look at this. Right there. Spice ginger cookie creams. Oh, look, my god. Look how awesome gracious. that is. The Loch Ness Bakery. You better not let our kids see that. Our, that's like on our son's bucket list. He wants to go to Loch Ness. A-S-A-P. Well, friends, if you are interested, you can go to webox.co.uk and use the code CAST10 for 10% off checkout. Once again, that's webox, W-E-E-B-O-X.co.uk and use the, ca- the code CAST10, C-A-S-T-1-0 for 10% off at checkout. What's not to love? Oh. I mean, hey, spice ginger cookie creams. I, I'm hungry. This now. right here, the, the 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 two things are cookies that we got <laughs> are, are worth more than the wee box. I know, <gasps> and I can eat this. There's no milk in it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Mary's going dairy free. <laughs> yeah. And uh, those who are joining on live, we have lots of people saying that they love their wee boxes. Other people saying they can't wait to get theirs. Uh, we even have Carlia, uh, who's in. Australia, who loves her wee boxes? Who doesn't love wee boxes? I mean, hey, the wee boxes go everywhere, man. <laughs> they reach far, far and wide. It, the, the reach is uh, is incredible. All right, here we go. You ready for some more uh, voicemails, Marvin? Sure, I am. All right, let's do it. No, hold on, they they ain't playing. They, they gotta, they gotta be stopped. Debbie Reese on Facebook wrote Marian Bl- in. Oh. Sorry, okay, go ahead. sorry. What you got? I thought you wanted me to read. No, no, it's okay. What? Debbie Reese wrote in on Facebook saying, Could we possibly hear less beating of the dead horse that is season six and what should have been there, please? It's season seven. Oh, no. <laughs> Harry was like, Cookies, yay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Debbie's like, Shut up. You amateurs. We're Why done don't with you. Stop the- talking about season six. <laughs> Eat your cookie and shut it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Debbie said, Could we please stop hearing uh, less of the beating of the dead horse of season six and what should have been there, please? It's season uh, seven. Yep. And the story needs to be told. I think the episodes have been beautifully portrayed and the continuity of this story has been perfect given the situation we encountered. Thanks for all you do. Debbie, you know what? For you, we're done. We're done bashing season six. Yeah, I think so. We're oh, done. Oh, no, no, no. I, listen, I, I am. Was, I'm done. I wasn't. Ba- I'm done for Debbie. All right. Fa- fa- I wasn't. Ba- oh, well, I kind of did. But I, I was trying to say that. But whatever. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm moving on. We're just listening, for Debbie. Debbie. We like right? your advice, and just, I'm here for just it. For it's as suitable for vegans, even better. Oh, here awesome. We go. All right, here we go. <laughs> Blake, hi. It's Marsha from Ohio. Hi, Marsha. So this episode, all the feels. A solid five. This should have been the premiere. Um, it was really nice to finally put a big old bow on the Christie storyline. Who that Alan? He needs all the copays because oh. he was plum loco. But um, <laughs> plum loco. it was really interesting to get that storyline finished. Um, my good uh, was all of the medical jargon. I'm a nurse, so that makes me geek out when I hear Claire talking doctor. You know. Mm. Um, So, and I really loved that she, um, when she was listening to Mandy's heart rate, that we as the audience got to hear that too. So it just really brought us in the moment with her. My bad, um, 
that baby was spotless when she handed her back to Brie. And I'm a labor and delivery nurse, no and that never happens. And this was the 18th century. We yep. don't get them that clean now. How did she get her that clean then? No wet wipes. I don't know. But my great is that emotional arc of this episode. Oh, all the feels, all the tissues. Oh, my gosh. We expect Sam and Katrina to blow it out of the park, which Agreed. they did. Mm-hmm. Sam, oh, my gosh, ripped my heart out with those tears. But Sophie Skelton is the real hero of this episode. Mm. She really blew it out of the park. So can't wait for uh, the next episode and have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you, Masha. And by the way, we all got to say it right. When you come to Outlandcast, you mm-hmm. come to Mary and Blake Media, it's not blow it out of the, it's not blow it out of the park. It's, it's knock it out of the park. That's how we do it. Yeah. You got to say, it. Masha, next time you call in, if you say blow it out of the park, no. No, you come here, you 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 bring it, it knock it out of the pack. <laughs> All right, Marvin, oh, everybody I, here, everybody here is yeah. saying on Facebook that's watching us live, especially Carrie, because she's the first one to call it out. Yep. They want a review of the cookie. How is the spiced ginger cookie oh my gosh. from Loch Ness Bakery? You can smell the ginger. Yes. It is so strong of ginger, but like in the most beautiful way, you just feel like you're in someone's cozy kitchen. <laughs> um. It breaks apart kind of like an Oreo. Actually, easier than an Oreo. It's bigger than an Oreo. Mm -hmm. The cream inside is Oreo-esque. (laughs) No? What? That's what she said. Oh, sorry. Hold on. That wasn't loud enough. That's what she said. Anyway. (laughs) um, The spice in this cookie, because it is a spice ginger, my my tongue is still tingling. (laughs) This is delightful. This is truly delightful. Awesome. Okay. I just want to say... I was expecting a dirty, look, normal-looking baby. Yes. And nowadays, they keep some of the schmutz on the baby because it, like, is good for them. Yep. You know, they take off some of, the, like, the red stuff, but they keep some of the white stuff on. <laughs> Just saying. What's it called? I'm not... I don't even remember right now. That's what it is. No, it's not meconium. That's the thing that they poop. That's poop. Yeah. No, it was... Was it called... I don't know. Some, someone will remind us. Someone, they, if a nerd's but, out there, so, some so, nerd knows. You know, TV birth is different. And actually, what's funny is I was rewatching this episode. Vernix. Um, thank, thank you. you. Jody. Thank Appreciate you. that. Uh, I was watching this episode and then it quickly sh- got to the birth and our little lad was in the room and Brie was yelling. And our little lad goes, oh my gosh, what's happening? I said, actually, this is birth. This is this is what it's like. She's having a baby right now. And I figure, you know what? I'm not doing birds and bees totally right now, but he can see that birth is no walk in the park. <laughs> and then the sound effects when Brie gave birth were pretty authentic. It was like, <laughs> and I was like, up, oh, yeah, okay. So yep. maybe, maybe we're gonna see some yucky baby. Yeah. Nope, nope, no, nope. pristine. I was like, Claire, we know you're amazing at what you do, and I'm not saying, friends, that I wanted a yucky looking baby on TV, but I just I could have used a little something to make it authentic. It was very clean, but you know what? It's a magic baby, yeah. So it's okay. This whole family's magical. If they had babies at Disney, you know they'd pop out clean. Oh, absolutely. They, yeah. they they'd come with diapers already on. Yes, they would actually come <laughs> potty trained. So this was a magical episode, and we just had to ignore. Yeah, I, w- the way that I look at it, stats of nerds, like whatever. We got the idea. We got the idea. Oh my god! Do you see what Lynn just wrote? I do. And you need to read it. <laughs> Lynn says, "Marion Blake, message me your shipping address. I work for the company that makes Charmin." <laughs> no, uh, Mary, say it right. Charmin. Thank you. I love your shaman mentions and want to send you some and also set you up with some Puffs tissues Puffs. so you could cry into a tissue instead of toilet paper. Puffs, <laughs> we ain't that high class here. We ain't got that kind of money for Puffs. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I love this. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, Lynn. I will gladly accept uh, the shaman and the high class Puffs. I will. I'll never turn that down. All right. Mm-mm. Let's get to the next one. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Angie in Georgia. Hi, Angie. And I just wanted to give my feedback for episode 7-2, The Happiest Place on Earth. I give it a 4.89 kilt. Okay. I loved it. Mm-hmm. My good is when uh, Roger and Bree end up on the other side of the stones and they see the airplane flying over. Yep. Mm-hmm. I know it's make-believe, but like I totally got chills. I loved it. My bad is uh, the flashbacks when Alan is telling his tale about Malva. Didn't need to see that mm-hmm. flashback mm-hmm. Um, and wish they would have put a warning at the beginning of the episode. Um, super gross. Um, 
my great is the emotion between uh, Jamie and Claire when they're in bed and she's yes. like sobbing and you know oh, yes. heart is breaking. I've been there and their acting was just superb. Um, I loved it. Also, really love seeing uh, Lord John again. He's super hot, so <laughs> yes. um, that was super fun. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. And I'm so excited to be uh, listening to Outlander cast again. Aww. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Angie. Angie. And Angie is a member at jointhenerdclan.com. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angie. The reason why Lord John is so hot is because he is ageless. He is timeless. He, my friends, is a vampire. Say it out loud. Totally a member of the Volturi. 100%. Like, that is a guarantee. <laughs> like, I don't know how he didn't end up in Twilight. <laughs> All right, let's get one more voice, man. Okay. Here we go. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Katie from Situate, Massachusetts. All right. Proud Nerd Clan member. Thank you. I've been listening to you two for quite a while, but this is the first time I've ever submitted feedback. All right, hold on, hold on. First, first, we gotta we gotta do this. We gotta uh hold on, where is it? And then secondly, we have to do this. Your cousin from Boston. All right, continue on, Katie. Um, but I felt compelled to because I thought this episode was phenomenal and one of the best of the series so far. So I give it five kills, five plus kills, oh. 100 kills, oh. all the Charmin. Wow. Um, <laughs> Charmin. GVG because I don't want to run out of time, frankly. Um, I just wanted to touch upon. Katie, next time you call in, don't be bringing that Charmin crap to this place. You're from Massachusetts, You're from Katie. Massachusetts. We have expectations. <laughs> Okay, we've got standards. <laughs> we got <laughs> <laughs> My standards are back over at the packy. <laughs> My standards are eating a cookie while I podcast. I'm like Scott uh, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> eating Chinese food when we're interviewing him. Dude, come on, guy. Take your pork fried rice. One of my favorite Outlander interviews and ever. And go somewhere else, will you? <laughs> Friggin' eating Chinese food when he's, you can hear the, the, the I love it, because now whenever I eat when I podcast, I think of him. <laughs> <sighs> All right, sorry, Katie. Here we go. The scene that I found to be the most poignant for me, and that was the goodbye between Jamie, Claire, and the McKenzie's. You know, Jamie and Claire didn't get to raise their children together. Mm. So I've always imagined that the moments they spent with their grandchildren were extra special. Um, I personally have a four-year-old daughter, and I know how much my parents just absolutely adore her. So not only did Jamie and Claire have to say goodbye to their daughter, but also they won't be able to see Jem and Mandy grow up, which is just truly heartbreaking. Um, I'm a book reader, but something about seeing it play out on screen, I just found to be extra emotional mm. um, and I was bawling and I'm going to cry just thinking about it. Um, so well done the entire episode. Just so many scenes seeing play out um, from what I envisioned in my mind was just spectacular. So thank you both so much for all you do and take care. Thank you, Katie. And Aww. you cry as much as you need to. Yeah. You, you can call us. Think, think of us as like the therapy hour. I mean, and we're going to start to have tish real tissues now. Puffs? Like real, real people not, tissue. Not dollar store puffs. <laughs> not uffs. Not uffs. <laughs> Uff. Or puffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Here we go. Let's get to uh, the next set of uh, comments okay. that I have here. Dina Kending wrote in so many tears. No, you, you, oh, you're messing Debbie Reese. Oh, no. She, you already read that. You already, Sorry. I already nope. read Debbie. My fault. Debbie My fault. told us, you know, to switch things up. We nope, are. You're right. Dina says, so many tears. I haven't cried that much in Outlander since Faith. Mm. Wow. And that is a bar. I can't That's even rewatch. I was just rewatching a bit of Faith and I was like, nope. Nope. Yeah. Just can't. Nope. Can't do it. Uh, well, I, I did. I would just hit the fast forward button. Boop, 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 boop. My kilt rating, says Dina, 11 T billion. Oh, that, that's a. 11 T billion. 11 T. That is amazing. That's a, that's an exceptional that amount like of kilts. That's a hobbit word. <laughs> 11 T's at 11 T's. 11 T's, yeah. Her GBG is the good going there with Alan's speech. I wasn't sure they were going to stay true to the book. Her bad. If I had to pick something, it would be the tiny amount of time when to go Donner's men search the house. Huge eyes roll. Mm -hmm. And her great is the length of time they spend with the Mackenzie storyline. It deserved that. And her bonus great is Jamie telling Jemmy that if he ever meets a mouse named Michael to tell him Grandpa sends his regards. That was a phenomenal <laughs> episode. Full stop. 
Yes. Uh, somebody here on the Facebook chat, I have to go back to see it, and I apologize. It's if all I right, my it. love. They said if somebody had, a, if Disney had babies, they'd be the babies would be wearing a Michael Mouse t-shirt. They would need to, obviously. <laughs> Heather Wilson says, great balls of fire, literally. This is my first written review. All right. Thanks, Heather. I never get to them on time, and gets both four-point ink kilts and three hankies oh, reading. Oh, okay. Mm. Is Why that like you? a hankies for tissues or a hankies for hankies pinkies? Because I don't. I'm down I'd with the hanky, hanky panky. I'll tell you that. There's no hanky panky in this. So it must be <laughs> hankies like puffs. Now that we're classy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got to class up the <laughs> okay. joint here. You got uh, to be a classy broad Yeah, because then she says so many tears. So it's not hanky okay. panky. It's not bubbies. Dorcas and bubbies. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ziggies the shaman. Ziggies and beer. Zig- Go, see. <laughs> Go get my Ziggy's beer. So many tears, says Heather. She's classy. She uses a hanky, okay? So uh, many. I have to use a different accent because she uses hankies. So many tears. And I'm a known softy who loves a good cry. Wait, are you doing a southern accent or are you doing like a British Listen, accent? I'm just making my own thing. It's it's the spice cinnamon cookie. <laughs> Her GPG. Good. Everything related to Lord John Gray, William, and the Fraser's Mackenzie's. The uh, first glimpse of William was outstanding. She says, please play the sound bite. Oh, yes. It was outstanding. Outstanding. Where, where is my sound? Where, where, there it is. Makes me want to shout. And she also says that you need to play the other one too. Your cousin from Boston. Oh. Heather, you're from Boston? Why am I giving you this accent? From Boston. Well, there goes that, Heather. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you class it down a little okay, bit? Okay, here we go. Hank, who <laughs> use Hankies in Boston? Where's she from? We call that shaman. So who are the fancy people in Boston? Uh, I don't know, the people from like Marblehead. Yeah, she probably from. And there. all you Harvard nerds out she there. She probably has like embroidered. She probably has an embroidered hanky from like passed down from generations. <laughs> you know. From Paul Revere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know she Heather's lives in like bad. Brookline or Heather's something. Heather's bad is Mrs. Bug wandering through the woods. Really? I guess they just needed to remind TV viewers about the bug's existence. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Lots of storyline coming up, especially with that gold brick dumped under the table by the house rampagers. Insert suspense music oh heather is a director oh here. girl yeah dun 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 great was jamie claire releasing their grief after everyone is gone i looked for that scene in the last episode but this was even better than the book superbly written and acted and agreed with others in the thread one of the top episodes in the entire series is heather keeping my powder dry because i know what we have keeping up but wow well done stars uh well mary i have to ask you about the bugs and we got we got two instances of a bug here. Yes. We're bugged and, by the bugs. And I have absolutely no interest in anything bug related. None. Zero. You wanna know why? It's because like all of a sudden they're they just log show up. To yeah, you. they're they're such log carriers. All they do is like, they're like, okay, and these this is people something are I'm a big interested deal to now. figure out is like for people who are show watchers, because obviously when you're a book reader, you spend a lot more time with the bugs. You spend a lot more time with everybody, but you do spend a lot more time with the bugs. And for book readers also, who know the future, who may know some other things, you know, we may, we may be like, well, the bugs. But I wonder for show watchers who've never read the series and friends who are joining us live, we would love to hear your insight. Do you care about the bugs or were you like, what the heck? Why are you walking in the woods, you weirdo? Why do you, you have a gold brick, you weirdo? You know what they remind me of? They remind, they remind me of Nikki and Paolo. In um in Lost, we have to go back, Kate. How like when when Nikki and Paolo showed up, they're like, okay, we're gonna make these people a big deal now, and then it was just trash with the entire magic time. Ho. <laughs> with their magic, oh, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. So I'm just I'm throwing that out there. So I am seeing there's a couple of people um who are saying exactly they feel the same as you. So I just think that that's an interesting thing to keep in mind is do people who are show watchers, um. Do they care about the bugs in this episode? Yeah. No, I just, if. You cared so little about it that when Jamie was freaking out speaking Gaelic. Yeah. It's like, you whatever. just ignored it. Yeah. No, I don't like. And, and, and even if the bugs were part of the books, like then as showrunners, they have to know that they like they have to figure it out. Like if this is going to be a thing, if this is going to be something, which obviously it's going to be because they wouldn't just introduce these random characters out of nowhere for nothing. Then, like, figure it out. Yeah. Either use somebody that you've actually invested some time into, or again, just do the do the legwork be- okay. before you before you go Nikki and Paolo on me. All right, why don't we do the next one? Sorry. 
<laughs> this one comes from Rochelle. She says, they pack so much into that episode. Tony Graffia never disappoints. Totally agree, Rochelle. As a book reader, I feel like I have whiplash, but given the amount of ground they are trying to cover, they did a good job. The preview clips they showed us was the most random and varied I feel like we have ever had. The only thing that seemed they a bit were. weird was inserting the bug storyline when we haven't really had any of that in the show. Wow. I, I swear to God, ladies and gents, I did not plan this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the books, they have a deep relationship, but not so in the show, which makes it feel awkward for them to insert all of a sudden. Uh, praise be. Praise be, because I, I can't agree anymore with what you're saying. All right, let's get some more voicemails. Okay. Hi, Mary and Blake. My name is Michelle. I'm calling from the central coast of California. Hi, Michelle. And I am so excited. I just joined your nerd clan. So Welcome. I'm a proud nerd clan member. Thank you, Michelle. And I finally caught up with you guys. I started binging Outlander during COVID, and I needed somebody to... Um, listen to to help me recap the episodes. Aww. I also read all the books Yay. and now I'm just excited that um, I can participate in your little clan here all and right. give you. my reviews. So I just left you a written review for episode two and um, I also stopped reading the book. So after this um, season, I don't know what's going to happen. All mm. right. Even though people spoil it which is unfortunate, but we don't um, spoil I it also here. Nope. listened to you for The Last Kingdom, which was really fun All as right. well. So I look forward to being in your little nerd clan here, Aww. and um, I look forward to listening to the next episode. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. By the way, why don't you follow in Michelle's footsteps Footsteps, and go to maryandblake.com and check out The Last Kingdom with Mary and Blake. Uh, shameless plug. We've had a few people who have recently... Uh, started checking out The Last Kingdom and they're like, oh, this, yes. this was really good. It's really good. I mean, <laughs> it, it took two seasons for Mary to care about Uhtred, but you know what? <laughs> when she did, it was phenomenal. I was in. I was <laughs> she in. was in. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next one. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Tonya from Norway. Hello. Tonya. Yeah. This episode 4.7 kills. All right. But I also is putting this episode in season six. And in that scenario, this was an amazing <laughs> season finale. Yes. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Alan, this is one hard cookie to crumble. Mm -hmm. Ian finally puts an arrow to it. Yes. Making this a full circle moment, at least for me. Mm -hmm. So Lord John keeps on giving. Yes. <laughs> and I just love that. <laughs> So nice to see Brianna meet William before they travel. And I do believe we heard Brie referent President Lincoln. And oh. so cool to see the yeah. wooden airplane. Just perfect introduction to the future. Yay. That's it for me. Good to have you back. I'm oh. a new NerdClan member from this week. I'm so excited to hear all about the fun after the show. Yeah. Bye. All right. Thank you. And thanks for coming to become a member. Right. That's so awesome, great. man. Thank you. All the way from Norway, too. All right. Love it. All right. We're going to do one more voicemail. We got okay. plenty more, but we're going to do, do one more. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Jamie calling from North Carolina. Hi, it's my first time leaving a voicemail, but oh. I'm a long time listener. Oh, right. um, I give this episode a 4.9 kilts. Uh, my good. Jamie and Brie moments, all of them. It was just so heartbreaking and toward the end, but uh, it was so great seeing how far they've come. And also my good is the conversation at the end with um, Jamie and Roger. The approval from Jamie, I know it means everything to Roger. Yeah. Um, they've come so far, so that was all just so good. Uh, the bad, those super huge fireflies. Um, I've never seen fireflies that big in my life, <laughs> but I, I'm so happy they, they carried that from the books. Um, and then my real bad was the attack on Malva. Just didn't feel like we had to see it. The story from, mm -hmm. from Alan was creepy enough, um, in my brain. I didn't need to see it on the screen. Um, but the great, everything between Lord John Gray and Jamie, um, their, their eye contact outside when uh, Bree was meeting William, um, and the conversation that Lord John Gray and Jamie had later in the episode, um, just, Seeing two friends who have been through so much having to part ways uh, because of things out of their control, um, seeing the tears in their eyes, knowing the emotion behind their words and the things that were unsaid between them, um, but carried so much weight. That whole scene was just so powerful and I, I really loved it. Um, so thanks, y'all. Love listening to you. Um, thanks for all you do. 
Thank Aww. you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was definitely an emotional episode. Uh, here on Facebook, I had, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Facebook. I had a great comment when I read it. I was like, this needs to go into listener feedback. Jody says about Sinead O'Connor's rendition of the Skyboat song this season. I wonder if they chose her because she has a bit of a rebellious political background. And we're coming into the season where the colonies fight the British. They've become a rebellious political nation. It's probably a far reach, but that's what's popped into my head. Jody, I don't know if you're right, but I love this take. I adore this take. And if that is, if that was the reasoning behind Sinead O'Connor doing the, the Skyboat song, count me in. Uh, I will, I will, that's a deep cut. It's a totally deep cut, it's, and I think that only works for like our generation and older. But Jody, I am in. Marvin, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I dig it. I'm here for it. I think that's I think that's a great take. Agree. And uh, knowing Bear, I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like I read something somewhere that alluded to that too. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of in. I'm kind of in. All right. Uh, let's see. We got one on Instagram here. The Scotland Diaries. We know who this is. This is Anne. She says, cried like a flipping baby almost the whole <laughs> way through the yes. episode. Damn Outlander. So very, very good. Yes. Jamie and Claire, better than ever. Compelling story. Love, danger, laughter, all of it. She gives the infamous five plus kilts oh my goodness and friends if you are not following the scotland diaries on instagram you're missing out our dear friend ann gavin um she she just she does beautiful work over there she's she's from the u.s originally and is now over there uh married the love of her life she's a sassanac over there Mm. now and uh is able to share the beauties of scotland through the lens and i I could spend hours just watching her Instagram stuff. It, it, <laughs> so it does good. not get old. Agreed. All right, let's get some more voicemails. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Stacy. Um, Stacy. So glad to be back this season. So for episode 702, um, in terms of my kilt rating, I, I don't love giving like perfect scores because like, I guess there's always room for improvement, but mm-hmm. oh my gosh, this episode, like 4.95 kilts. Mm-hmm. It was so okay. good. All right. My good um, was just the the performances from everyone. I felt like everyone knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Um, you know, Sophie really. Am- Stacy was almost there. She was almost. She said she knocked it out of the park. It's knocked. It, come on, knocked it out of the park. Come on, let's go. Impressed me. Um, Katrina and Sam. Oh my gosh, they're like emotional scenes. It was just beautiful. Um, my bad. The continuity in Claire's wigs, <laughs> like her hair, like, from it was so you know, bad. From the opening scene, from where Alan dies, to then right next where they're digging the grave, her hair grew like two <laughs> inches. Um, and my great, I was so impressed with how this ex- episode was written and structured. They hit so many major plot points, and yet they weave them together so beautifully. Every major moment felt like it had time to breathe nothing felt rushed or shortchanged mm. you know we got beautiful moments between Bree and Jamie and Bree and Claire and mm-hmm. Jamie and Claire and you know you know Jamie and Claire being grandparents and all of that and I was just it's maybe one of my favorite episodes up there with Agreed. 213 anyway uh bye guys bye bye Stacy you. uh you know Mary uh Stacy said it. Uh, everything had room to breathe. Everything, you know, there. Like, this episode could have gone very awry, right? And the reason why that it had so much time and so and the right pacing that allowed all these things to breathe. Two words, Tony Graffia. Just throwing that out there. Bro, I, I, I'm not even throwing it out there. I'm I'm putting it as a standing stone in Mary and Blake Media. Well, and I, as I said earlier, I just feel like writers and directors and lighting designers, you know, all the they don't always get the the shout outs right. that they deserve. So right. I appreciate. And the other thing too about the wigs, like I I desperately want to say stats for nerds about the wigs. Stats are for nerds when, like, we were arguing about, you know, oh, we don't, they don't make molded with bread that way with covering it. Remember that? That's how this all started. But I can't go that far with the wigs. Like, that's a, that's a true continuity era. 
Like, I mean, neither of us have hair in that texture, so maybe it really does change that much, but <laughs> I don't know. Just got confusing for me. Leslie Ross writes in, I cannot remember sobbing through an entire episode before this uh, before 702 we were promised an amazing jam-packed episode full of high emotion and captivating storyline the show kept its word in all aspects Mm -hmm. great acting great story heart rendering emotion etc i have listened to you guys from day one of the series wow but i've never given any ratings all right hold on this one for me Breaks through all the rules and precedents. I give 702 the equivalent of how I feel having just watched it in the middle of the night three times, writes Leslie. Oh, my goodness. Gracious. Not a horse, but a stable. <laughs> and I will narrow my kilt rating down to a 10. Wow. Okay. Yes. All right. I a love ten. this review. We're Leslie. going, we're, we're taking it to the yes. moon with this 10 kilt yes. rating. Holy <laughs> I love smokes. It. <laughs> all right. Let's get another voicemail in here. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Roisin from Dublin in Ireland. Roisin? Hi. Um, so happy that Outlander is back. So happy that you guys are back. I watched this week's episode 702 and at the Stones, I was in floods, floods, yes. floods yes. of tears. For me, those scenes very much reminded me of when my respective parents were passing away, when they were dying from an um, expected illness so there was many times where we were going to the hospital and you know nursing home etc to say to say goodbye um and that drawn out feeling Mm -hmm. um so it was actually very cathartic and very therapeutic to think of that this morning i thought it was very i thought the scene was executed very well in Mm. that idea of you're saying goodbye to somebody that you love um in their case they don't know if they'll see them again but that was it that i resonated with um, and thinking as well that, you know, they're not dead, they're just gone or wh- whatever the phrase was that Jamie yeah. used. It's kind of, you know, basically the, the idea of people are still with us. Yes. Anyway, love that. Love the show. Also, I love the new intro. I love the Sinead O'Connor version. I think <laughs> she's a real rabble rouser, a bit like Claire. And that's what I like about it. Uh, okay. Bye. You know, I hadn't thought about saying goodbye to someone in the stones in that manner. I've shared before, I haven't lost anyone super close to me yet through um, illness and death. Um, And Blake, you lost your mother suddenly. Yes. So you didn't get to say goodbye, uh, which is tragic in its its own regard, right? Mm -hmm. So I think neither of us saw the saying goodbye in that kind of grief way because we haven't personally experienced that. But it'll be interesting to know if other listeners of Outlander cast feel that way and if now when you rewatch this episode you're able to also have that kind of therapeutic release as well oh yeah no I totally agree and by the way Roshan I love your name I love yes. your name the way that it's spelled to mm-hmm. R-O-I-S-I-N oh my goodness Roshan you call in anytime you want <laughs> I'm just happy to see that name on, on this thread all right cool here we go let's get another one Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Lucy in Hi, Lucy. Warnable, Australia. Hi, Lucy. Oh. I have loved this latest episode, The Happiest Place on Earth. I am giving it a five plus kilt rating and wanted to share my GBGs. All right. Starting with Lord John, David Berry. What a performance. So beautiful. <clears throat> the longing in his eyes and the heartbreak in his voice. In all of his scenes with Jamie, um, my that's definitely my good. Mm-hmm. My bad, only being nitpicky, really. Just felt the episode was a little bit disjointed with those storylines, with the Alan Christie stuff, mm-hmm. all of this beautiful stuff with Amanda that ends with the time travel, mm-hmm. and then finishing off with everything in the big house and the explosion. But my great. Definitely. Sam Hewen, all through the episode, really, from mm. him welcoming Amanda, but all of his heartbreakingly beautiful goodbyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just, I cried all through the, those final scenes Agreed. as he said goodbye to everybody. And I feel like I had a giggle, but it made me cry even more with his little joke about a mouse called Michael. <laughs> <laughs> loved it, loved it. Wow. All the best to you guys. Sending love. Thanks. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. You know, it's so funny because um, Jamie has obviously 
aged uh, quite a lot from where he was in season one. Yes. He even tells Claire, um, you know, how about he's how he's not as brave. And I would agree. I mean, all of their acting has been elevated to such an extraordinary level. But like, I believe that this is Jamie Fraser and I do not see him as Sam. And I think having seen Sam in different interviews or in Men in Kilts, which we will be covering, just so you know, friends, we will yes. be covering it here on Outlander Cast. Um, you know, Sam, I see Sam as Sam and I see Jamie as Jamie. And I just think that Sam has a, such an incredible job being able to be this different person. Yeah, it's weird. I, I will say that when I watch Jamie, like I'm in, like I can, mm-hmm. I, I, I see that character as that character. And it's weird when I see Sam outside <laughs> Of, of Jamie. Of Jamie. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, it's weird. Like, it's, I don't, it's hard to process. It's, it's like, it's almost like Sam is the character and Jamie's the real person for me sometimes. Wow. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it, it's really weird. That's amazing. Um. Okay, so uh, where are we here? Uh, let's see. Anna from Western Australia sent an email. Would you like me to read it? Uh, yes. She said, holy doly. Hooli dooly? Oh, hooli dooly. Hooli dooly or hooli dooly? That is. I don't even know. Sure. Zoo, who? <laughs> hooli dooly. Now that was a 500 kilts one. So many storylines merged into one amazing episode. I'm a book reader and I was in tears from the moment Brianna was giving birth and continued to pour the entire way through. Mm. Her good was how many plot lines they were able to get into one episode without it seeming too much. And I'm just going to pause, listeners. Like This is why one of the big the reasons why we do the listener feedback episode. Yes. So many times people's goods are other people's bads. And I love being able to dig into this episode. You know, Blake and I started podcasting about Outlander because we didn't have anyone else to talk about it with. (laughs) And I love the listener feedback episode because we get to hear the reasonings behind this. I love this. I don't like this. Like it's her good is how many plot lines they got to get in without it being seen too much. Yep. Love that. Her bad was the sound. I don't know if it was just my devices, but the music overpowered the speech for a lot of it, and mm. I've been lost without the captions. Her great, where do I start? The entire freaking thing was a masterpiece <laughs> that cut my heart into ribbons and left me thrilled and heartbroken and all the other emotions in between. The writer needs a Whitney moment on Outlander cast. Oh! <laughs> in fact, everyone in this episode does. Does, should, hold on, time out. Should we does really? Does Anna from Western Australia get to ask for the Whitney? Should we really start giving Tony Graffia the Whitney Award? I mean, she's saying everyone too. Uh, but yeah, we'll be, we're at the, we're all talking about Tony. Yeah. And you know what? Just cause. And I will always love you. I don't go throwing Whitney around easily. Okay, this is this is a, an honor. Okay, this is a to- this is a Mary and Blake media honor. Tony gets a Tony gets the Whitney from now on. Wow. wow she she wow, gets the Whitney wow. from now on. Okay. All right. <laughs> Some notable moments. The firefly scene with Brianna and Jamie. Brianna and William meeting. Jamie's single tear and say goodbye to Brianna. Katrina Baus' incredible performance near the end as Claire mourns for all that are lost. This one is a rewatch over and over. I can't wait for next week. Thanks for your fantastic podcast. I look forward to hearing your takes on this episode and at Lairdish Theories from Blake. Oh, thank you so much. All right, let's get some more emails, shall we? Uh, I'm not emails, uh, voicemails. Yeah, those two. Why not? (laughs) Okay. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Julie from Anaheim, California. Hi, Julie. Julie. Home of the original happiest place on earth oh tony graffia does it again her writing absolutely excels at tugging on heartstrings how could i rate this as anything other than five kilts my good my great my best my good was seeing all of the nostalgic vintage disneyland photos and (laughs) videos i could totally picture frank and claire trying to make valuable time with brie Bree gazing up at the sparkly trees glittering in the night, Mm -hmm. meeting a giant rat, (laughs) I mean mouse, (laughs) magical. And then Bree telling Jamie that he was magical to her. Sigh. My great is Claire sobbing in Jamie's arms as she grieves over the absence of her children. Sam and Katrina totally bring it in this emotional scene. Claire feverishly climbing all over Jamie, trying to escape the pain until she just pulls back and sobs uncontrollably heartbreaking 
Speaking and my right guest, now. I know this episode was all about relationships. The relationships between all of the main characters just pulled at every heartstring, and wa- and Grafia wonderfully weaves together the love, the heartbreak, the humor, and the sorrow that make up our relationships. And she ends it with a bang, literally. Mm-hmm. See, she knows where it's at. She's calling. She's calling out Tony Graffia too. She's totally calling her. That's awesome. Just and by the way, she also made mention of one of my favorite things uh, to, to that everybody should know. This is a Mary and Blake Media commandment. Television and film are all about relationships. If you don't have relationships, isn't that what which life's about? Require vulnerability, which then gives us drama. Then you don't have. A television show. Okay. And that's why everybody loves this episode because of the relationships and the emotional equity that they used to, to leverage those late relationships. Mm-hmm. Things matter in this episode. The interactions matter, right? It's important and uh, it, it makes you feel, which is also another Mary and Blake media commitment. All right, let's get the next one. Okay. Hi, Mary and Blake. It is Gloria from Salem. I oh, you guys. Hi, so glad you're back to being live. Thank God Outlander is back. <laughs> you're I do wish they just let like, all 16 episodes play out instead of making two parts. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll take what I can get. So I give this episode five kilts, baby. It was amazing. And it had so much in it. As a book reader, I know all the different stories are spread out and played out. So I can't believe how much they put in one episode. My GBGs. My good was Ian getting rid of Alan. Nice work, Ian. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, as Alan and Claire were talking at the grave sites, you could see how disgusted Claire was when listening to him confess his incestuous love for his sister and all that until she looked like she wanted to slap him. Kind of wish she did. Hmm. My bad was Wendigo Donna and how he was so stupid and lit a match even mm-hmm. after Claire told him ether was spilt. Yes. What an idiot, to mm-hmm. quote Hermione Granger. <laughs> My great was all the hell was devised between everyone, especially Jamie and Brianna. I cried mm-hmm. like a baby. Mm-hmm. That's it. Trying to keep these short for once. <laughs> so glad you're back again and you both look wonderful. Hope you feel good too. Love yous. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Gloria lives in Salem now. Yes. She used to be Gloria from Methuen. Oh, Wonder what happened. Maybe she wanted to go to the Sanderson sisters. I don't. Who wouldn't want to see this? By the way, Hocus Pocus three is coming out. Will it also be filmed in Rhode Island? I Probably. hope so. I hope so. That yeah. would be cool. Fun fact, friends. Hocus Pocus 2, which of course was released on Disney, that was filmed in our little wee state of Rhode Island and many of the places that you see in the film, Blake and I either visited or honestly we lived at. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so really, really cool. When they're in the Walgreens, yeah, we lived that was, above that Walgreens. Yeah, that was our condo. <laughs> that was our condo. <laughs> I used to buy all the things in that Walgreens <laughs> from the As Seen on TV aisle that's and true. try them out. The shake weight. Oh, That's how we got a shake weight that's how, in yes. Clan Lassie. I got so many random things from that Walgreens. <laughs> all right, let's get another uh, voicemail here. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Brittany from Rhode Island. Hey, Brittany. I am giving this episode 4.95 kilts. Now for my GBG, my good, all the Disney. Seeing the old video footage of Disneyland after the opening credits, it was a lot for a gal who loves both Disney and Outlander. Mm -hmm. I totally geeked out. I absolutely loved Brie explaining Disneyland to Jamie. Mm -hmm. I may have more to come on that later. All right. And, of course, his mention of the mouse named Michael to Mm -hmm. Jamie. It was so (laughs) cute. The bad. Alan Christie, I wish the Christie storyline was wrapped up before this episode. It just didn't fit, and I'm glad that they at least put this section before the opening credits. Mm -hmm. I think the scene of Alan assaulting Malva could have been left out. Alan talking about Malva was disturbing enough. It wasn't necessary to see that. Mm -hmm. The great for me was the acting. Sam, Katrina, and Sophie were outstanding. Amazing performances. Overall, a great episode. Outlander is back. Yay! All is right. it Friday yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, love hearing from Brittany. She's another local Rhode Islander. Oh, yeah. Um, and she does have something in store. So, friends, make mm. sure that you are 
uh, keeping your eyes and ears on all of the socials. <laughs> all right, Tammy here says something uh, uh, special, Mary. I think you should. I think you should read this out. Okay, Tammy uh, says, "I'm surprised no one has called out when William is reminded that Bree is Jamie's daughter when they meet." William says, "Oh, the groom from Hellwater." That comment was really jarring for me. How quickly William made that connection. Thoughts, hmm. feelings. Well, obviously, Jamie played a huge role in his life mm -hmm. i i i i will say that it's a little convenient but like oh yeah the groom from hellwater i remember that part of me feels like this is what this is my thought on it because lord john um lord john's like oh yeah you know she's she's jamie fraser's um daughter yep i feel like lord john when he gets a little tip say <laughs> He has a little too much rosé. Oh. He's like, William. Does, does he do rosé with ice or does he, no. is he a no oh, ice no. kind of no guy? No ice. No ice. <laughs> no ice. And then that's just like his summertime. You know, like yeah. Aperol oh, yeah. Spritz. What is it? Spritz. Aperol Spritz. Yeah. yeah. He's got one of those. I mean, he's just fancy. He makes cocktails too. <laughs> he makes themed cocktails oh, for the holiday. Of course he does. Yeah. You know, he's making like wintergreen cocktails during Christmas and like with cranberries and like well, especially since Queen Charlotte had brought over the Christmas tree. Yes, recently. exactly. I mean, he's all about that life. <laughs> he he loves Queen Charlotte. He's like, do you hear? Like, so he, <laughs> yes, he brought in Christmas trees. William, I got a new tradition. This new queen, she's amazing. She's all about the the festivities. Needs more gold. I'm here for it. He makes a little evergreen drink while he's drinking. He's like, let me tell you about a Christmas I spent. No, it's <laughs> let me tell you about some things. Oh man! And I think he he ref well because also he like visits Jamie, and I feel like he would say, "Oh, William, I'm like gonna go over there and mm. go see that Jamie Fraser guy." So I feel like he's mentioned it just a little bit, and maybe William's been like, "You mentioned this guy, man. You got a little twinkle in your eye. <laughs> something, 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 something." What you tell me to go up here? What do you want me to go up to? Um, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep <laughs> okay. going. It's hard to find. What what? <laughs> Okay, there we go. All right, go ahead. Read it. Angela says, Blake, I meant to call this in, but got behind. They are not trying to say that they are going to say goodbye forever, meaning uh, Lord John and Jamie. They are saying until the war is over, because it would be dangerous to have correspondence while they are on opposite sides because of the spy accusations, mm. etc. They weren't saying goodbye forever. Jamie is actually doing this to protect John, just like he did leaving William when he left Hellwater. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, no, I, I hear the reasoning. Yeah. I, I just so I wasn't like, getting all... Yeah worked up about yeah, it that's because okay. yeah because i i know as a viewer mm -hmm. that it it's it's not like jamie's not gonna die and they, so they're gonna see each other viewer, again you weren't feeling that that was solidified where it's like buddy we need to pause for a long time and maybe it'll be forever because because it, it could be forever if one of them dies in battle yeah no no i agree so, okay. i agree i'm saying again i, I and i i just want to i want to reiterate this perfect scenes are when the Anything can happen for the characters and anything can happen for the viewer. Okay. That is a perfect scene. I know that this is not the end. Now, if like, if uh, Lord John were going to sacrifice himself for Jamie and whatever, and like he was going to die and this was their last conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to get worked up because I love the relationship. But as a viewer, I know one thing is going to happen. I know it, what's going to happen. They're going to get back together again. Somehow, some way, it's going to happen. So I'm not getting worked up over it. Even though that they as characters know, or, or at least understand, that they could never see each other again, mm -hmm. I know that they will. So it just doesn't have that kind of oomph for, you. Oomph for me. That, I understand. That's, that's, that's I appreciate the difference. that for you. That's do you have difference. any more voicemails? Yes, we do. All right, here we go. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is my own from Florida. Oh, yeah. I'm a proud Nerd Clan member. All right. My kill rating for this episode is five kills. This episode was amazing. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Everything about it, from the music to the scenes to the acting, chef's kiss. <laughs> my GBGs for this episode are good. All the interaction between Claire, Jamie, and Brianna Amazing. Love the scenes. My bad is Alan Christie. Yep. Good riddance. Couldn't stand him. <laughs> Good My God, riddance. he's gone. Yes. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, and Mrs. Bug. I have a really sneaking suspicion that something's bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. She's giving me bad vibes. Don't like her at all. And my great 
is the episode in its entirety. The I'm a really I'm a really it's really hard to make me cry, and this Aww. episode was cheerful for Aww. sure. I'm a huge Lord John Gray stan, and it just broke my heart to see him so sad. Aww. Another thing, my outlandish theory. Yes. I have an outlandish theory that the fact that Jamie Jamie was so mad about. Mr. Bug and the gold mm-hmm. has to do with the. She got cut off. Oh no! Oh no! You know what the theory is that suspenseful that yeah. we'll never know. We're, we're, no, it's it's like what was in the gold box in Pulp Fiction. Yes. <laughs> we're just we're we she's just giving us a Quentin Tarantino. That's Here what we, go. we just got Tarantino. Yes, it's All like right. the finale of The Sopranos. You never know. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next one. There's only one more after this. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Erica from New York, longtime listener, first Hello. time feedback giver. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to call in because uh, something interesting about this episode is for me, I actually was born with the same heart condition that baby Mandy was oh, born wow. with. Uh, I had it. I was a. I was what was called a micro preemie. I was born very, very early when my mom was only twenty three weeks along. Oh my goodness! And uh, yeah, I had the condition. They gave me the surgery. Surgery worked. I've never, thank God, have had any heart problems since. You know, please. Uh, and um, yeah, so the wow. surgery works. I just have a massive scar. From the center of my chest all the way to the center of my back. <laughs> oh my wow. goodness! Anyway, thank you for all that you do. Love the podcast and uh, really appreciate it. Bye. Wow, oh Erica! Gosh. Holy Erica, smokes! Erica, thank you for calling in, and yeah. also thank you for sharing that you yourself have gone through the same exact procedure that little baby Mandy's going through. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm delighted to hear that. Of course, everything has gone super well for you. Hearts are scary. Yeah, man. Hearts are scary. That's a wicked scary. Yeah. All right, here we go. We got the last one here. You ready? Uh, yes. Last I am. voicemail. Hello, Mary and Blake. It's Anne from Denver. Hey. I'm in reference to Outlander, episode 702, The Happiest Place on Earth. I am uh, just wanted to let you know my kilt rating was 4.8. Ooh. I really enjoyed this episode. There were some parts of it that I didn't like, like the whole Alan Christie thing. Mm-hmm. If we wouldn't have had um, uh, Mr. Brown at the end of the last episode, you could have moved that into that episode. I thought it would have been better there. As for my GPGs, I think um, the good was overall, it was very good. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I also, believe it or not, enjoyed um, Katrina's voiceover. I think it was well done, and mm-hmm. it just kind of hit certain points. Mm-hmm. The bad would definitely have to be that burial for me. Number one, you have Katrina's hair short than long, then short again, <laughs> and let alone why did we need to see the burial? I really don't think it was important. And the great would have to be David Barry and Sam Hewen and how they yes. played that scene in mm-hmm. Lord John's room. They were there for each other. You could tell they were acting with each other. You could tell they were supporting each other. The tears on either side. Mm. I thought that was probably the best scene in the entire episode is how those two played off of Mm -hmm. each other and were there for each other for that episode. And Blake, for your outlandish theory, interesting. Hey, all right. I like it. Love it. Thank you so much. All right, that is the end of the voicemails Marvin now it is time for uh, us to view the upcoming preview for episode Amazing. three uh, do are, are we gonna in- reinstitute the time travel uh question I need to like figure out how I used to ask them so maybe next time okay um, I need to like recap well them actually you know what last episode you kind of did you kind because you asked me if I would have gone in However, it wasn't like, oh, if we're going back to the 1700s, would mm-hmm. you go in? It was like, it was like, okay, today, would you go into the house? Okay. When somebody was there, was was there? So, all right, we kind of had that like in spirit. Okay. So, I think if we if we if we want to do it, we'll leave it up to the nerds. If the nerds want us to reinstitute the Back to the Future segment, okay, we'll do it. Now that we discovered what it's there for. <laughs> all right, you ready to watch the uh, the uh, preview? Sure. Yes. All right, let's do it. 
had another dream. Your time. Tell me what happened. All right, so clearly their their house. There's a, there's a little beep beep. Wait, hold on. What? A little car. Oh, hold on. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. It starts with the car right, driving. So, so we're, in the future. We're we're definitely in the future here, because uh, we see the big city up here in the mm-hmm. right hand corner, and obviously we see the car. Um, and the sheep. This car, uh, it's it's too hard to tell what kind of car that is. I can't tell if I that's like either. a yeah. Sorry, we can't really get much from. And then the, we're back into Jamie's Jamie. All right. Not another dream. Oh, okay. So this looks like uh the little bed. Um, uh, I, if I were to put some money on it, they're in the cabin here because their house is all blowed up. Oh, yeah, you're right. See what I'm saying? Okay. All right, and that quilt, that quilt does not belong in the big house. That that's a cabin. That quilt. is not a Claire Fraser quilt. No, Claire Fraser has a carefully curated collection in her home goods. Yes, this is a little too. This is the one you went to. The, you went to. This like, is like you're in your twenties. You went. <laughs> you went to the Ocean State job lot and got it for like five bucks. I know. I mean, someone made that, but Claire would be like, "Thanks," and then she'd fold it up and put it away yep. or give it to somebody. That, this, this is really. We're gonna put this in the <laughs> cabin. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Beam. Your time. Tell me what happened. Tell me. I saw them walk up to. Oh, okay. Oh, hello. All right. So uh, this, I I can't tell what kind of car this is, uh, but this does not look like a '60s car to me. Okay. This looks more like late '70s, early '80s mm, to me. Yeah, makes me think something that they would have driven in "This Is Us." Yes, absolutely. All right, here we go. And obviously going to- Yeah, we're going to Lallybrock. Lallybrock yes. All right, so we're, obviously we are headed back to Lallybrock, which means Roger and Bree are going to la- back to Lallybrock. Uh, and maybe that this is their car. Is that a Ford? Uh, no, I don't think that's a Ford. All right. Oh, yep. Okay, yay. there you go. Yep. Yeah, so, yep, they are driving that car. Okay. And she's got some bangs. Holy smokes, hey, lost the Fraser. girls. She's a She needs bangs. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it ain't a dead a dead spider. <laughs> <laughs> these these are real bangs. Yeah, she she used she's excited to have her blow dryer back. <laughs> were they happy? Oh, were they happy? Oh, there you go. There's the house. That Ugh. is oh, nice shot with Jamie sitting in the in the doorway like that. That's with interesting. Claire. Holding Claire yeah. and by Ian is by Ian buying <laughs> himself again. Claire's like we've lost everyone, and Ian's like she still doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> He's your poor thing. It's okay. Oh, he's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, bye, Ian. Oh. Death, be not proud. Put on a brave face. All right, whoa, whoa, time out. Time out. Yep. Death, be not proud. Mm-hmm. Put on a brave face. It, it looks like they're walking like in a procession here. Who's, who's dying? Alan, they ain't burying Alan. They already buried him somewhere, you know, you know, in the marsh. Yeah. Right? So, who's dying? Because this was in the trailer. This part was in the trailer with someone dying. Hmm. And her singing. Yes. I wonder who's dying. Well, it's not not the people in the video. Yeah, definitely ain't Lizzie. Nope. Lizzie's right there wearing her... Uh... Representing her teal and greens and blues. <laughs> this is the... We call this the Handmaid's Tale outfit. Oh. Um, yeah. It, de- it definitely ain't Jamie. Hmm. Interesting. Who who else do we actually care enough about to have a funeral? I mean, there's a lot of people that still live there. Yeah, but like, who do we care enough about uh, other than a bunch of log carriers that are on the ridge now? You're just gonna have to find out. Please. Maybe one of the, maybe maybe one of them twins dies. Maybe that's oh well, no because I mean that's it, why you have an extra husband. Yeah, <laughs> that's the insurance policy. This is before they had insurance policies. You just had extra husbands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Right. Be strong. Oh, she That's acknowledges him. Do for now. Be strong and keep breathing. All right, so, so, so why is she telling uh, Ian to be strong and keep breathing? Because he, they've forgotten about him this whole time. And he's like, guys, <laughs> I don't feel like I matter. I don't feel like a contribu- contributions are being seen. There's no one else here my age. I've got nobody to play with. <laughs> Ian... Ian is is to Outlander what Anyang was to Arrested <laughs> Development. <laughs> He's just going around just saying, hey, guys. 
and Claire's going, yes, and An I Yang. Love Ian. We yes. love Ian. We I know. love him. It's your name. Yes, Poor An Yang. Yang. I know your name. <laughs> I don't know if other people are going to get that joke, my love. I know I that you love it so much. I don't so care. Much. I don't care. It's it's That joke is perfect. All right. All right. So that's I'm excited. That. That's We're going to be seeing some future. going to be seeing some past. Going to have Jamie having some other magical dreams. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, I love that he's having these magical dreams. Oh, He's all right. To me. This was a long episode, Matt. Yes. I did not anticipate this uh, to be uh, this long, but you know what? We're good. All right, that's that. You ready to close this bad boy out? I sure am. All right, let's do it. so incredibly much for tuning in to this our inaugural listener feedback episode for season seven blake and i just appreciate you so much and we especially appreciate those of you who have become members at join the nerd clan.com because truly you make all of this possible right blake anya <laughs> just said anya <laughs> Darrell gets my on young uh Good. reference thank you i appreciate that Join the nerdclan.com. Go to join the nerdclan.com. And th- again, as a promise, if we get to 950 members there, when we get there, whoever wants a Michael Mouse t shirt, we're sending it to you because we just love you. Yes. That's it. We do. We give back. That's, we how, do. that's how we work at Mary and Blake Media. <laughs> Again, it's because we're the boss. We don't get to listen to some corporate overlord. So just as a reminder for those of you listening in real time, this is going to be the 4th of July weekend, and we are going to be changing oh, a yes. bit our recording schedule. Please make sure that you are on our email list serve. Just head on over to maryandblake.com and a pop-up. Yourself. Email list serve. Is that not what they're called anymore? <laughs> no. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, well. Um, what is this? 1999? <laughs> I don't know. Get on my list there, guys. <laughs> um, anyway, miriamblake.com. A pop-up is going to come up asking you if you would like to get our emails. I don't spam you. It's me sending them, I promise. Um, but we will let you know when the podcast episode is going to be going up. It is will be different. It will not be necessarily a live on Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern just because we are going to be away and celebrating the holiday and I don't know if we're going to have internet access. Yes. So we are planning to do it ahead of time. Yes. We're planning to do it most likely on Friday. Uh, Yeah, because... Because we got it. That's we have to. All right. <laughs> so, so we're going to wake up and sure watch it. Make sure that you have an email from us as we're going to be letting you know the day and time in case you do want to be joining us live. And if you do just hear this in the future and you just are like, wow, a podcast dropped on my phone a day early. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, America, for your freedom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, I do want to thank our friends who are our most generous um patrons at jointhenerdclan.com um, these are our friends who are at the levels of associate producer, co-producer and executive producer and I like to just give them a little shout out because they help make all of this possible. Mm-hmm. Dina, Brittany, Vicky, uh, Lisa, Caitlin, Norma, Tara, Peg, Christina, Jennifer, Suzanne, Susie Q, Brenda, Joanne, Jennifer, Carrie, Stephanie, Tracy, Shauna, uh, Siobhan, Katie, Candy, Marianne, Sarah, Carolyn, Angie, Barbara, Karen, Laura, Christine, Anne, Bobby, Keelan, Marilyn, Dana, Meredith, Kirsty, and Kathleen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you to everyone at jointhenerdclan.com for making this possible. All right, on that note, my name's Mary. My name's Blake, and everybody, go out there, be your best treasonous self. Go out there and just Commit some good treason in honor of. We actually have like treasonous shirts. What do you My mean? dads gave them to oh, us. It's that's like happened treason day. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you could only wear this a yep. couple times a year. We, we get to wear it in Rhode Island three times a year yes. because we have the 4th of July, we have the 4th of May, which is Rhode Island's Independence Day, yes. and then we have Gatsby Day when a bunch of drunk Rhode Islanders burned down a ship. <laughs> and did the first violent act against the British. They don't mention that no. in Outlander. Nope. Where's James Fraser getting his little onion from Fergus? Oh, these people in Rhode Island. <laughs> getting hammered <laughs> with their ciggies and beer oh, from the packy. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right, friends. My name is Mary. My name is Blake. You've been listening to Outlander Cast. Happy 4th, everybody. Yes, happy independence. Unless you still live in England. Then screw you. No, <laughs> screw you. But they like 
are there. <laughs> you know? No, no, screw you. <laughs> That's the one day oh out gosh, of the year I get no, to say screw don't. screw England. He's joking. He's joking. We love you. <laughs> A little bit. Not too much. Unless you're Queen Charlotte, then I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>